You know, and um, you've talked about the social media, Charlie, but you also um, enjoyed a bit more of the uh, more traditional media by once again we're going back to that racing post, they get value for the money uh, <laughs> column. And the main the main piece was where you you thought that your first Royal Ascot winner, thanks B, should have been disqualified because Haley broke the rules. Um, have you got anything more to say? I know you've talked about it in for item. Yeah, so so basically, a um, few things that maybe didn't come across in the article. No, not that it didn't come across, but I think that I've heard people say since then. Number one, Haley gave it a great ride. She gave her a lovely ride. And I, and I, as a trainer and as a horseman, had no objection. I saw Jim McGrath on Sky Sports Racing, and he said, if, I can't believe Charlie Fellows is offended by that ride. I wasn't offended by that ride, and I never, ever, ever said in my column I was offended by the ride, at all. For me, I understand. I understand that the whip is padded. I understand that it probably, we don't know, but it probably doesn't hurt them. Um, and at no point did I look at that and think, oh, poor Philly. Doesn't matter what I think. That's, that was my problem. And the reason I said this, and the reason I said the article, was when I left Ascot, we caught, drove home that evening after a few drinks lots of drinks and we had BBC Radio 5 Live on because I'd been listening to the cricket on the way down and 5 Live is a national radio station it's not the Racing Post which is read by racing people it's not Racing TV which is watched by racing people it's not even ITV3 Racing which is generally watched by racing people it is a national radio station listened to by people who are not racing people and their news story, which goes around every hour, every single hour, and it went around, we listened to it four, five, four times on the way home. Their news story was Hayley Turner, first female jockey in 32 years to ride a winner at Royal Ascot. And if they'd stopped there for racing, that would have been the best news story possible. How good could we have looked? But it didn't stop there. Sting in the tail, Hayley got banned for nine days for hitting the horse, 11 times uh, and a 1600 quid fine. That don't look good, not to racing people. And that is what I want out. Now, it doesn't mean get rid of the whip, but we've got to work out a way to stop these news stories getting in to the main public sort of con conscience. And for me, that means stopping people going over the limit and for me the only way that you will ever get jo jockeys not to hit them more than seven times is by saying you go over that seven you're out i don't think that giving them a longer holiday or increasing their ban or increasing their fine will do any good because owners will continue especially the big owners they'll pay that fine for the jockey so the jockey's not get, getting fined and they'll just have a long holiday where they'll be looked after. Especially in the group one level where there is so much at stake and where there is so much money to be made by, a, say, a stallion go, you know, winning a group one. So when the stakes are as high, no matter how long you ban those jockeys or how much you find them, it's not going to stop them going over. You imagine Shamie Heffernan or a jockey riding for Coolmore and they're head to head in the St. James's Palace or in the Commonwealth Cup. If he hits him too many times, gets a three month ban, what are Coolmore gonna do? They'll look after him absolutely fine. It's not gonna sort their, it, it's not gonna be any skin off their back. And so the only way we can stop that is by saying seven and you're out. Now, I don't want the stick to go. I think the stick will go. At some point, I think society is changing, and I think 5, 10, 15, 20 years, I don't know when, it will go. But if we are seen to be being stricter and more self, you know, better at self-governing our sport, then it will stay with us longer. And do you know what? In a big race, on the big stage, when there's so much at stake, jockeys will probably hit them five times because they'll be so worried about going near that, that limit that they'll probably hit them a le one, or le one or two less. And that is no bad thing for racing. It'll improve jockeyship. It'll 
potentially improve the breed because the more willing, the more tough, the more sort of tenacious horses will come to the fore. And those that are lazy and those that are not really, don't really want to do it and those that only respond for things like a stick will maybe find it harder. So there's a load of positives from this and that could come of this. And I think we've got to be brave and I think we've just got to go for it. Um, and I bet you that if they put it in, you'd never, ever, ever have to test the rule because you might get it on a Monday night at Windsor and someone might do it and they get thrown out and I tell you then it would never happen again. And it would definitely never happen on the big stage. And that's the important time because that's when we get our world out there. And that's when the big papers and the radio and they report on us. They don't care if someone gets thrown out at Windsor on a Monday night. They won't, it won't be on Five Live, but it will be at Ascot. And that's when we have to be on our best behaviour. Now, not everybody's agreed with you, have they? Have you been, uh, Matt Chapman in particular, has been quite voracious his opinion on the TV. Have you been surprised by the backlash mm. you've had from some quarters? Uh, it's been it's been a look. I've had letters, I've had emails, I've had messages, I've had a huge amount of support. Now, one thing I'm very aware of is that you're going to hear from the people who support you. You're probably not going to hear much from the people that don't support you. So, I've I've I personally I've had a lot more support than I've had people not agreeing. Uh, there's a few trainers, friends of mine, uh, more senior trainers who don't agree with me. William Haggis, who is a good friend of mine and I have a huge amount of respect for, he doesn't agree. He, he, I, think, I think he agrees that the rules need to be tighter, but he doesn't agree with chucking the horses out. Um, I think, um, obviously I heard Matt Chapman's uh, comments. Uh, Matt, <sighs> I don't really know where to start with Matt. Matt's, um, Matt's not a horseman. He showed in his interview the other day that he doesn't understand horses one bit. Um, and uh, he, I don't know, he made it personal, which just was completely unnecessary. So um, I was a bit surprised. I don't really understand why, why he had to make it like that. Um, to be honest, he's, yeah, I don't really care what Matt Chapman says. He doesn't know what he's talking about, so that's fine. And uh, he did a race and debate program with Mick Fitzgerald and Josh Appiaffi. And I personally thought that he would, would, was taken to the cleaners by them. So um, yeah, there's always going to be people that disagree. I tend to think that Matt Chapman says things for effect rather than actually thinking about them. Now, you say you don't care what Matt Chapman says, but you've also said that some of your friends consider the um, use of the whip cruel and it's difficult for you to make them believe otherwise. Now, maybe as an individual it is, but has the sport done enough to, to educate people? Um, I think it's very difficult. I think it's, I mean, how, how is the sport meant to go out and educate people? Are we meant to go up Oxford Circus in London with a cushioned whip and say, look, this doesn't hurt? It's not, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, and if I'm struggling when I'm sh telling my friends, I promise you guys, it's cushioned, it doesn't hurt, or, you know, imagine how difficult it is for other people to. And I'm afraid, whether we like it or not, society is changing. And um, the way we look at our world and the way we view animals is rapidly, rapidly changing. And it's not like it was 40 years ago, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago. Um, in what area of life are you allowed to use a stick to hit an animal? You're not. So why are we any different? Uh, and even if it doesn't cause pain, it bring, why does it make them run quicker? What is it about the stick that makes horses run quicker? I just think it's not a good image. I, I, don't, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I understand it. It's not, it's not a problem with me. But I can completely... I would really struggle to argue with someone who says... who, who was arguing against the stick and that didn't know. I would, I would really struggle to put a cohesive 
and, um, and uh, convincing argument together. What would you say to the people that argue that by banning the use of the whip, or at least curtailing it, um, it would put the breeding of the racehorse back hundreds of years because of the fight or flight thing has been sort of improve it. to them? I think, it, I think it would improve it. I, I, I actually disagree with that completely. Um, as I alluded to earlier, I think if you, you know, if you ban the stick, what you actually are encouraging are the, the more honest, the more genuine horses will come to the fore. And you will breed from horses that naturally want to race and want to race, rather than those that need to be persuaded to race. So actually, I, I don't think it will have any harm whatsoever on the breeding industry at all. I mean, what, one of the horses that has been cited as a, an example would be like Persian Punch would never have shown its true potential had it not been given a few cracks of the whip. Yeah. But, uh, so instead of, instead of, you know, you, you, what you would do is you, we would have replacements though. Okay, yeah, the, those horses like Persian Punch, maybe they wouldn't be quite so successful, but you might have another really genuine horse who just wants to be at the front, who would thrive, and he would become the next champion, or the, the, you know, the, the, you know, the next superstar. So just because one type of horse, or a lazy horse, would not benefit from the rule change, another horse, a genuine horse, would benefit, and they will become the next stars. They will become the ones that win you know, those stairs races, five, five of those big group ones. They will be the ones that, that write the next chapter in racing. So you won't lose your stars. It'll just be a different type of star. Yeah, there's one other thing I was, um, when asking around about this, people telling me that the whole method of training young horses to respect the whip, etc., would have to change as well. Is that something that you would... Again, completely disagree. Uh, you kn I mean, you could come to Newmarket uh, when, we're you know, when, when all the young horses are coming in, half the trainers don't want to stick on their horses, on the younger horses. Um, so no, I don't think it would have any effect whatsoever. In fact, you know, the majority of senior trainers would tell their jockeys they don't want sticks on yearlings or on two-year-olds. And I have owners, well, I would say my instructions to a jockey, especially early on in their career, were please don't hit this horse. Now that's another interesting fact. You look at those, you look at a lot of the big trainers, they will say they don't want horses to be hit first time out. Why is that? Because they're worried about having an unpleasant experience. Well, why would they have an unpleasant experience if the stick is padded and not, and not an issue? Yeah. So, and you look, your Sir Michaels, your Haggises, your, your, your really top, top trainers. And the majority of those, you watch them first time out, jockeys won't hit them. There's a reason for that. Right, now then, this one. Do you think the Racing Post would have been so keen to publish your article if your stance had been that it's ridiculous that Haley was thrown out, the jockey should be able to hit a horse 10, 15 times? Um, first things first, I think a lot of people thought that I was uh, that I was sort of pushed into writing this. They gave me free reign. They said, you can choose whatever you like. Uh, you can talk about anything. Uh, I think they wanted, they wanted me to talk about my move over to Bedford House. And I rang up Lee Mottishead, uh on the, whenever we were gonna, he was ghostwriting it for me, so we sort of did it together. And uh, when I rang Lee up, I said, right, I've decided what I want to talk about and I'm, I fear that this might explode, but I believe it and it's, you know what, so it was completely my decision to write that article and I, I chose a subject. I wouldn't, they wouldn't even give it as an, as an option. Uh, if I'd said that, I'm sure they would have done. I'm sure they would have done and I think they would have, yeah, I, pro I probably would have got a much bigger backlash had I said that than, than the other way around. But, I can't speak on behalf of the Racing Post, um, but I am sure as a relatively um, you know, unbiased newspaper that they would have allowed me to write whatever I want within reason. Now you've been very open and honest about every, all the questions. So if you had the power and influence to change things, what would you like in horse racing? What would be the first thing on you, Charlie Fellows' list? 
I mean, it's so boring, I'm afraid everyone says it, but I would, if I could have anything, I would ask for a time machine to take me back 50 years and just redo, re, retake all those decisions that were made such a long time ago that have just completely and utterly ruined the funding of this model, you know, this horse racing model in, in England. Um, because it is sad that uh, a country where the strength and depth in, in the actual racing is so strong is rewarded so poorly. Um, and it's like, people say, well, why don't you go abroad then? I don't want to go abroad. The racing in this country is the best in the world. The tracks are the best. You've got so much variety from your Ascots to your little race course. Everything is different. You go abroad, it's boring. It's boring. They're all flat, round tracks. Yeah, the prize money is amazing. Prize money is amazing, but there's no variety. Here, we have so much strength and depth. We have the best jockeys. We have the best trainers. We have the best tracks. We have the best horses. And as poor as the return is, and as hard as I and a load of my contemporaries are finding it to make money, um, you ask 90% of us why you know, we'll go and train in France or we wouldn't because the racing here is brilliant. And it's, if you can train here and if you can really do well here, you know that you're pretty good because it's the toughest place in the world to train. Um, and although financially it may not be so rewarding, there are a huge amount of other awards that do make it worthwhile. Brilliant. Charlie Fellows, thank you very much.